Hi, all. I am Trisha Clements, and I'm the chief fur wrangler with MuttButts.com. So I'm a social media manager, and I specialize in pet businesses, hence the Mutt Butts, and also video. So today, I want to talk to you all about content and using video for content in your blog. But first, I want to tell you a couple things. So there are my two rescue mutts, Reedy and Margie, and I love talking about them and showing pictures of them. So also, I'm a little obsessed with tiny houses and I kind of like the color purple just a little bit. <laughs> so, okay, so the first thing that you need to do for your website is to determine your content strategy. And you're gonna do that so that you can establish credibility and authority and also it builds brand awareness and helps with SEO and traffic for your website. The way I like to start is to start with a calendar, some type of marketing calendar. And I do like to kind of start with 12 months, but if that's a little bit overwhelming and too much for you, go ahead and just do a three month or a 90 day plan and come up with topics, broad topics, not really detailed at first, just some broad topics for your content for your site. And if I go through the slides, I'll have an opportunity, I'll have a link for you to get them afterwards, so, um, so you definitely will get those if you don't get everything that's up there. So for the topics, where do you come up with these topics for your blog? Several things, if you're having new products, new services come out, and if you're having promotions and specials throughout the year, you probably already have some type of marketing set up for that. So make sure you're including a video and blog in that marketing strategy. So that's one thing, events, seasonal things. A lot of us have different things that come up in our business that are seasonal. Now the one that I like are holidays, and we have our regular holidays like Thanksgiving, Christmas, and all of those. But I like doing something with, it's the National Day calendar. They're a little bit unusual and unique holidays, and they're not really holidays. But, so like today is National Gardening Day. Uh, it's also National Pecan Day. So um, basically every day of the year has like at least four or five different days um, on there. So you can pick something and um, just make it unique and use it for just an inspiration for your blog content. For instance, I have, um, I do pet businesses a lot, and April is National Stress Awareness Month. You know, we're all stressed out in our businesses. And so one of the things I like to do is take something that doesn't necessarily completely relate to your business industry, but do a twist on it so that it does. So what I did was said, what reduces their stress level so much but our dogs. So I said, well, instead of talking about our stress, why don't we say, what are some ways that we can pamper our dogs and show that we appreciate them? So that's just an idea of taking something like National Stress Awareness Month and associating it with the pet industry. So that's just an idea so that you can see what I'm talking about with that. Video and also live stream, Facebook Live, all of that. Um, you all know how popular video is, and it really does help increase the know, like, and trust factor. And one thing is people want to get to know you. They don't necessarily want to really know your business. They want to know who you are, who they're working with, and who they're dealing with. That's why video is so important. It helps with that know, like, and trust factor really well. It also helps increase engagement online. Now, the key, I think, really with video is to transcribe your video. And if you all, some of you all were probably here this morning hearing Christine talk about accessibility um, for those that are impaired and have different disabilities and need access to that. That's definitely um, a, one of the reasons you need to do it. There are a couple of other reasons that I wanna talk about. The first thing is SEO. So we all know Google can hear us. Google knows what we're saying all the time. They're listening to me. <laughs> and, but for instance, I have Google Voice on my phone. All of my voicemails get transcribed and emailed to me. Sometimes I know exactly what they're saying. Sometimes I'm like, huh? Who called? What did they say? 
Um, so Google doesn't always get it right, so definitely have it transcribed because in your videos you're going to be mentioning your keywords. You want them to get it right because you know we y'all we all have accents. We talk really slow. We talk really fast, and Google doesn't quite pick up what it is we're saying all the time correct. So make sure you're having them transcribed for that so that they're getting the exact words what you're saying. Um, and also because you're doing that and it helps with the SEO, it picks up what you're saying, it will increase traffic for your website and um, viewers can watch it without having the sound on. That's really great. So um, there are two different ways to have it transcribed. Uh, one way is the free method. Um, I do have a link to a YouTube video that I did. The one thing I have to tell you about that, it's very labor intensive. So it takes a lot of time to do it yourself, unless you're a transcriber. <laughs> um, but now I like to um, use online method where you send it online and they transcribe it for you. And usually it starts off at 72 cents a minute. So depending on the length of your video, it really may not be that much to have it done, and it's really worth it. Um, I'm gonna talk, if whoever you decide to use for that, I use GoTranscript, but whoever you use, make sure that they also give you a Word document. And I'm gonna talk about that in a little bit, why you need to have that. So um, when you get your file back from having it transcribed, typically they give you what's called an SRT file. That's what you'll do when you upload that video to YouTube, you'll use that SRT file. Facebook doesn't recognize that SRT extension. All you have to do is simply go to your file and change the extension. Really easy. A lot of that, like I said with Google, it's not always right. Um, I've gone, and that's the free, version, free method, is having it done that way, but a lot of times it misspells my name, it misspells my company name. I want people to know if I'm doing a video how I am. <laughs> and like I said, with keywords, it may get them wrong. So you, that is a good way to do it, the, the free method, but it is time consuming to go through it and make sure everything's spelled correctly. Um, and it just depends on how how fast or slow you talk, how much of an accent, you know, how, how, you, um, how Google picks up your voice um, or YouTube. It, well, Google, YouTube is owned by Google, so same thing. Um, so it may work really well for you to have YouTube transcribe it right there for you, and you can download that transcription file. Um, so, but yes, for Facebook, you just change the extension, I have that, the E-N-U-S-S-R-T, that's what you're gonna change the extension from SRT to in order to use it on Facebook. Okay, um, yes, um, it is dot E-N underscore U-S dot S-R-T. Now, before you do any uploading of your videos to wherever it is you're gonna upload them, Facebook, um, Instagram, YouTube, wherever you wanna upload it, make sure you're putting your metadata in there. So you're gonna, it's really easy, just right click the file and go into the properties, details, description, and fill everything in. You're gonna have your keyword for your title and subtitle. Um, and your tags, that's the same thing as keywords. So if you have secondary keywords, that's where those are gonna go. And also your comment section, one or two uh, sentences about your video, what your, the whole gist of your video is about. They have a section there for you to five star it. My videos are always five stars, so I five star it. I'm not sure <laughs> if, if, they, decide, if they, um, they count anything towards that, but I decided, oh well it should be a five star. So, <laughs> okay, so now here is a big tip for you. Did you know if you do a Facebook Live and after you've finished with your Facebook Live, if you think this is a phenomenal, I did so good, what you can do is send that off and ha have it transcribed and afterwards go to your Facebook Live and edit it, you can upload a transcription because Facebook loves Facebook Live even more, more than just regular video, they love their Facebook Lives. So afterwards, if it's getting lots of attention, you can have it transcribed and uploaded so whenever you share it or someone else shares it, that transcription will then show up on it. And that is only available for pages right now, not profiles, it's Facebook, so who knows when, that, when or if that might change. 
So your content content. What are you using your videos for? You're going to use them for any number of things, your blogs, your newsletters, your uh, social media posts. You can use them for lead magnets, online ads, all kinds of things that you want to use your blogs for. And I almost forgot, I want to do a, have this passed around, and anyone who's interested, please put your business card in it. If you don't have a business card, write down your name, address, and phone number, and I'll be doing a drawing. It'll be for a free 30-minute video chat with me. So that'll be going around the room, and we'll get that at the end. So just let me know if you have any questions. I'll do that towards the end, but those are the three things you'll need to have on it. Okay. So your blog. Um, you do need, I mentioned the Word document that you're going to be getting when you get your transcript. This is what I use to create my blog. We talk a lot differently than we write. So I will just basically go down and um, take the Word document, adjust it for a blog content, put in the headings, put in links, put in um, images, a click to tweet, I always like to do that. Um, just basically optimize it. Now, um, your keywords, of course, make sure they're in there. Um, now, when you're putting uh, your video in there, don't just upload your video to your website. First, it takes up lots of space, but you also wanna have that social media share and, and everything that you're getting from people viewing it. So, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, when you post that video on those sites, you're able to get an embed code. Use that because when someone goes to your website, let's say you used Facebook and they watch the video, you'll also get that count as a view on your website on your Facebook um, video that's posted. So make sure you embed it and don't just upload it to your website. Um, let's see, and then of course images, I think I mentioned that. Okay, then I will take the blog that I just did, do a couple of sentences and do a newsletter. So the main reason I wanna do a newsletter is to send people back to my blog because that's what I really want them to do is come to my blog and read it there. So I use the newsletter to, to do that, link to the blog. I also sometimes put the video there in the newsletter as well. And your social media, of course, all the different social media things, places that you're on, go ahead, make sure that you are uh, putting that out there and using it for stories, ads, and promotion. You can even take little clips of your video and put that out there as well. Um, and then the main thing is to make sure that you know that the goal for your social media is to lead them back to your site and, and potentially for a sale. So when you're sharing your content, you do need to have something, some type of call to action um, to get them interested in coming to your site or to sign up for your newsletter, which then lets them know about um, everything that you've got posted on your website. And again, I mentioned the call to action, whether it's having them comment and engage with you or sending them to your website or also sending them a lead magnet. Okay, so basically the main thing that you need to know about video is it's a good way to just consistently add content to your website. So you are having your video and creating your blog and then sharing that, sharing the video. It really is a good way. The main thing you have to do is just prepare and plan for it. That's the most important part is to prepare and plan and use video. And yes, this is my Margie. Done is better than perfect. Just do it. <laughs> Just do it. <laughs> um, and then let's see, I have one little thing here. So I have, oops. Well, the sound's not on, but oop. Let me go back. So, um, so I had her on here, but, um, but yeah, so the... Let me go back down here to it. I was thought the sound wasn't on, but maybe you. Oh, no, no. Okay. I'm not sure. Are you seeing that? Okay. Okay. Okay, yeah, you can hear it. Okay, so that's Margie. <laughs> and she loves doing that and showing off. 
So I do have a free checklist for you, and it includes everything um, as far as preparing to create a video, creating a video, different tips that you need to do for that, and also after you do your video, what you need to do. So that's at muttbutts.com slash video checklist. And remember, our butt only has one T in it because they might be mutts, but they are 100% loved. So there's Margie, she loves showing off, she loves chasing squirrels, and you see the um, little acorns at the bottom of the last couple of slides. That's because your goal is to be the squirrel. And you know, on social media, you know, it's just like we're like dogs that get squirreled. That's your, your goal is to be the squirrel, be the thing that grabs their attention. Let's see. Okay, so yeah, there. Oops. I somehow got this. Okay, so there it is. And there's Margie dressed up again as a squirrel. You have to be the squirrel on social media. All right, um, and so again, the checklist is muttbutts.com slash checklist. And does anyone have any questions?